Dear viewers, in this video, we will see how we can plot an interval plot. And by plotting an interval plot, how we will be able to estimate the confidence interval. Right? Uh, before getting into this uh, video, we have posted a separate video on what is confidence interval? What is the technique of estimating population parameter from sample statistics? In the process of estimating population parameter from sample statistics, what is the role of confidence interval? and what exactly confidence interval means. So there is a separate video that we have posted on the theory and the formula of how it works. So I'm going to uh, share the link of that video in the description as well as the end card in this video. So you can listen to that video to understand the conceptual understanding of what is confidence interval. Once you conceptually understand what is confidence interval, then you can understand how Minitab makes it easy for us to estimate that confidence interval using interval plot. Now we will understand about interval plot. So here I have taken two sets of data. One is 32 samples from machine A, how much time it takes to produce an item in machine A. So totally we produced 1,000 items from machine A, but we have taken a sample of 32 items. Similarly, we have taken a sample of 32 items produced in machine B. Again, in machine B, we have produced 1,000 items, but we have uh, taken a sample of 32. Now, if I have the data, the population data of 1,000 items and measured time for each of them, I will be able to directly calculate my uh, population average, which is mu, population parameter. I can directly calculate it. But in many of our real-life scenarios, we will not be able to have access to the population data. So we have collected a sample. So based on this sample, now we need to estimate what is the, the population average. So I click on graph. And then... I keep my mouse pointer on interval plot. So interval plot, plot the mean and its associated confidence interval for one or more groups. So I select this, I select a single uh, data, that is single set of data, then I select OK. Now I select machine A. And once I select machine A and click OK, I get an interval plot for the 32 samples that we picked up for machine A. So what is this graph telling us? The sample average of machine A is 5.9. However, the confidence interval is 6.18 to 5.76. So what does that mean? That means the population average for machine A will fall anywhere between 6.18 to 5.76. And we are saying this with 95% confidence. So whenever we are estimating a population parameter based on sample statistics, we should know what is the confidence interval and we should also clearly tell what is the confidence level with which we are estimating this population parameter. So this is how we will estimate the population parameter based on the sample. Now again, I have mission A and mission B. I have both the data. So now we will see how we can plot both the graphs in the same scale. So again, I click on graph. I go to interval plot. This time I select two sets of data, this graph, and then I click on OK. Now I select machine A, I select machine B, and then I click on OK. So once I click on OK, I get the confidence interval for machine A and confidence interval for machine B. So the confidence interval for machine B looks wider and confidence interval for machine A looks narrow. So whenever we are estimating population parameter, if your confidence interval is narrow, it's a good news. That means we are estimating our population parameter from sample statistics with very little margin of error. That is the understanding. If the interval is narrow, the error of estimation is relatively small. And we all would like to estimate population parameter with as little error as possible. So what is deciding this uh, size of the confidence interval? It's your margin of error. And what's the formula for that? In our previous video, we have clearly explained the formula, but maybe one more time I will explain here in this video also. The confidence interval for mean, the formula goes like this. X bar, which is your sample average, plus or minus the Z value for the corresponding confidence level. In our case, we have selected 95% as confidence level. So 1.96 will be the corresponding Z value. Multiplied by standard deviation of your sample, small s, the first standard deviation of a sample, divided by square root of n. Square root of n, n is square root of the number of samples you have picked up. So what is the best way to keep your sample, uh, confidence interval as narrow as possible? From a, a statistician point of view or from a person who is estimating this, the only thing which is in our control is the number of samples we pick up. 
if we pick up more number of samples we will be able to keep the uh, interval as small as possible that's one way of, that we can control the other part of this is how much is the variation in your population because the variation in your population indirectly will reflect in the variation in your sample so if the standard deviation which is in the numerator of the formula if that standard deviation becoming a smaller number will also make sure your interval is small but that is not in our control so as a statistician or as a person who is conducting a survey or uh, a person who want to estimate the population parameter from sample statistics uh, what is in our control is the sample size so you have to take the sufficient number of sample size to keep this confidence interval as small as possible uh, viewers, I hope this video was useful. Uh, as I told the previous video, uh, where we have posted about uh, how this formula works. In addition to this, this video will make it how easily you can estimate it using Minitab. We are planning to upload more videos on sampling concepts, sampling techniques, and different statistical formulas involved in the exercise of sampling. So please subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks for your time. See you in another video. Thank you.